at a glance at the photos on Milford Beach in the 20s and 30s, and they appear to be like many other dotted around the country. That was until you got a bird's eye view. And then two objects come into sight. One of them a giant pool. The other in the mid left. You need to blink twice to take in what you were seeing. Yo ho ho and a bottle of spades. You old pirate ship. Even the name oozes a coolness. If there has been a cooler piece of New Zealand architecture built, pop it in the comments and I will do a video on that. Just a reminder, this is what you have to beat. Tea rooms during the day. Dance venue and restaurant at night. And let's see how this all came to fruition. The concept of making Milford Beach a resort in the fashion of California began in the late 20s when things were rather tight. The pirate ship dubbed the Flying Dutchman, plonked right on the beach, was part of this scheme. Not all the locals were keen. Some felt a dance venue wasn't befitting. Compromises were made to appease the neighbours. Running events on Sundays were out and dancing in swimsuits as well. Here are your basic details on who was involved in the scheme. As we already know by now, it wasn't the only draw card on the beachfront. Besides the ship, in part two of the scheme, seven years later, came the largest artificial saltwater lagoon in the southern hemisphere. A quick before geese in the early 30s. Now completed in 1936. Now let's all look at poolside. And this remains a favourite historic photo of mine, taken in 1939, just before WW2 started. Not a fatty in sight. Paul, you can't say that. Even though the contrast in body shapes versus today is rather striking. It's now 1940 and the war is on. Less menfolk floating about. What happened to the pools? They lasted 21 years until they were demolished in 1957. As was the pirate ship, by the way. As far as I can tell, the pools had water quality issues from go to woe. Now looks to be marina on Google, but I stand to be corrected. Now back to the star of the show. The opening day crowd consisted mostly of dignitaries and shareholders. Jolly Roger fluttered in the wind. The ship's bell was rung at 8.30pm. The Flying Dutchman was open. A week or so later, the replica cannon was fired to welcome in the new year. The 500 then danced the night away, on the deck and in the main cabin. Reporters detailed the ladies' dresses for the newspapers of the day in great detail. Mrs Woods, night blue and gold, embossed velvet. Mrs C.R. Perrot, in black taffeta and a petalled hem in pastel shades. Miss E. Allison, white a Georgette with gold sequined roses. Miss W. Afreta, amethyst a shaded ring velvet. The old pirate ship was now the place to be seen. Inside groups were seated in booths. The structure would cater to 600 on a good night. The decor was in keeping with the theme. Heraldic shields, old lanterns, replica cutlasses and pistols hanging from the wall. A fair splattering of rigging. The men's was labelled The Armoury, Women's Lose, The Powder Magazine. The windows were, to say the least, novel.
Music was provided by its own in-house band, called variously the Pirate Cabaret, Ye Versatile Pirates Band, Pirate Ship Orchestra, Special Ferry Runs and Bus Services to and from were scheduled. The tea rooms were an essential part of the daytime operation, keeping it afloat, pun intended. Milkshakes, ice creams and slot machines clanging away. Pictures tell the story on the tea rooms. But it wasn't to be. The facility began losing money as shortly after it started. It was all but finished off by the end of World War II as a venue. It began looking like a forlorn version of her once great self. Till the Takapuna Council got the army to demolish it in 1957. All we were left with today are these photos and our imaginations. Relax now in your booth, look out onto the dance floor, see who's up who and who's not paying, breathe in the unfiltered ciggies and pipes as we slowly close this one out. Next up, the madcap adventures of Felix Tanner. He planned to circumnavigate the globe in this barrel. A quick tip, he didn't get far. Hat tip to those that provided the photos. I will spot you next time. Bye for now.